In this chapter two, we address the question of uh, how the motor behaves and how the behavior can be described and be adjusted to the required motor operation. For the moment, let's put the operating range and limitations in the background. We apply a fixed voltage to the motor and record speed and torque. The speed as a function of the load torque follows a straight line, which is described by this equation. So the speed equals a speed constant Kn times the applied motor voltage minus delta N over delta M, which is called speed torque gradient, times the torque M. As I said already, delta N over delta M is called speed torque gradient. It's the slope of the line and can be found in line 14 in the maximum catalog. Kn is called the speed constant of the motor and you can find it in line 13 of the motor data in the Maxon catalog. How can the speed torque line be explained? First of all, let's start at the left. So this is where torque is zero. So it's operation without torque, which is called no load operation. Here, the speed is highest. The more torque the motor has to produce, it is the higher the required load, the lower the speed. And if the torque becomes too high, the motor cannot rotate anymore. It stalls. This is the far end of the speed torque line. If you look at it from the other side, let's start at the right end. This is where speed is zero but this is also the point where the motor can produce the highest torque. So it will start to rotate, but the higher the speed, the less torque it can produce. At the highest speed, no torque can be withdrawn from the motor. And again, we are at no load. A remark about the slope of the speed torque line. The slope can be flatter if the motor is stronger. Essentially, the gradient delta N over delta M becomes smaller the bigger the motor. What's the influence of the applied motor voltage? Essentially, if the motor voltage is changed, the speed torque line moves in parallel. At higher voltages, the line moves up. At lower voltages, the line moves down. Adjusting the motor voltage is needed to run the motor at different load operating points. It's possible to run the motor at a fixed voltage. Or if you want to accelerate, you have to increase the voltage. All these adjustments typically are done by a speed controller or a position controller. We have learned that the speed torque line shifts with voltage. Therefore, for motor specification, a defined voltage has to be chosen and this one can be found in line 1 of the motor data. This voltage is called nominal voltage. In the Maxon catalog, there are three motor operating points given at this particular voltage. However, keep in mind that the motor can be operated at any voltage. The nominal voltage is just the voltage at which the motor data are specified. The maximum available voltage limits the achievable load operation points. For example, the extreme operation point at the end of the acceleration cannot be reached with the given maximum voltage. At the highest speed there will be less torque available and the acceleration will slow down a little bit. The operation point at the high speed can just be reached in this case, but there is no speed reserve. We come back now to the three special operating points at nominal voltage. We start with the no load operating point. No load is a little misleading because the motor is slightly loaded. There is no external load, but the motor has to drive itself. The real no-load operating point is not at the extreme left, but slightly shifted along the speed torque line. There are two parameters describing no-load condition. It's the no-load speed, N0, and the no-load current, I0. 
The no load speed is essentially proportional to the applied motor voltage. And the catalog value is given at nominal voltage. The no load current is proportional to the torque losses. So no load operation means no external load, but there are still the losses in the motor to overcome. No load current is a measure of the friction in bearings and brushes as well as of the iron losses. And the no load current can be used to easily test the motor. There's no need to connect the load. The second operating point at nominal voltage is called the nominal operating point and it is characterized by three parameters. The nominal current or maximum continuous current. This is the maximum current that the motor can thermally withstand. It is without overheating of the winding at standard conditions. The nominal torque has a meaning of a maximum continuous torque. The nominal torque is given as an output torque. The total torque would include also friction, which is expressed as a no-load current. Therefore, the output torque is related to the input currents by the torque constant corrected by the amount of friction. And the last parameter is the nominal speed. Nominal speed has no particular meaning. It's just where the speed torque line crosses the border of the continuous operating range. And the last special motor operating point lies at the right, where speed is zero. This is either because the required torque is too high, so the motor stalls, or because the motor is just starting, which is starting current and starting torque. Stall torque and starting current can be found in lines 7 and 8 and are related by the torque constant. The stall operation or starting operation point has some practical implications. So what you can learn is first that DC motors have a high starting torque. This gives a high dynamic response. Starting and stopping of DC motors need high currents. Often, start-stop operation is associated with current peaks. A power supply and controller might have limited current capabilities that can restrict start-stop operation. Now what you should have learned in this chapter 2. First of all, motor operation follows the speed torque line. The speed torque line is characterized by the speed torque gradient. The speed torque line shifts in parallel with voltage. The no load speed and voltage are proportional. Proportionality between the two is given by the speed constant Kn.